The dragons of Westeros are large and in charge powerhouses that completely decimate the world of Game of Thrones. But could something like that actually have evolved and existed in our own world? Well, let's find out on this episode of Rock Talk. Pew, 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 pew. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like it or not, Game of Thrones has ended. And while there are some pretty strong opinions about that season finale there, really, I just really want to take a step back and admire the dragons. The beautiful, amazing animals that have always fascinated me personally as a child, and that in terms of the series Game of Thrones hooked me from season one with just how amazingly animated and beautiful those creatures were and how much it added overall, for me at least, to um, the fantasy setting of the series. Totally, totally awesome. But what are these dragons? Um, and I know I'm not talking about thematically. I don't mean philosophically in a more general aspect. I'm talking about biologically. Um, biologically speaking, where did these dragons come from? How could they have evolved? And is it actually possible to have a flying animal like this? And that's what I want to find out on this episode. But uh, before we jump in there, I do want to establish just a few things right off the bat. First one, of course, being that this is a fantasy world, a fantasy environment. We don't know any giant flying lizards, at least not in this world, that can breathe fire and run around and, and uh, completely ravage entire kingdoms. I'm going to use anatomical observations based off of the show, Game of Thrones, to determine where dragons could possibly fit into our tree of life here on Earth. What they could have evolved from, what they could be closest related to in terms of ancestors or current animals that we know today, and kind of where they could possibly fit into that big puzzle piece. So let's jump on in and check it out. So the best piece of evidence that we have for dragon anatomy in the entire show by far are the skulls in the basement of King's Landing. We can see throughout the series that these skulls were the remnants of old dragons from years past that have since died on. Old remnants of the Targaryen Empire. Most notably is the biggest skull of them all, the skull of Beleriand the Dread, the largest dragon ever known to have had existed. And looking very closely at this skull, there are actually some very clever details left in place that were intentional to help kind of determine where these dragons may fit in our modern um, means of uh, identification. Scientists that study extinct animals, known as paleontologists, will use the skulls of animals to aid in their identification. And boy, does this skull have answers. Let's check it out. Observe in the skull here, we have three openings. We've got the orbits, where the eyes go. We have the nasal cavities, the nose openings. And then there's this third mystery opening in the skull. What could that be? This opening is known as an anorbital fenestra, or an opening that is in front of the eyes, in front of the eye sockets. And this is a hole in the skull that can actually be seen in a clade of organisms that have lived on planet Earth, known as the archosaurs. The archosaurs is the only group of animals that has ever been known to have an anorbital fenestra, an opening like this in the skull. So this immediately helps us to identify um, and kind of pin down dragons as a part of the Archosaurian group of animals. And that includes modern day crocodiles and alligators, as well as birds, and in terms of extinct organisms, includes the pterosaurs and dinosaurs, which already is making a lot of sense. All of those animals share traits that are very common when you think of dragons. You've got flight, you have big, large reptilian traits that are very, very, that are very um, similar when you think of a dragon. So we're already getting on the right track here. But here, my trail goes a little bit cold. In order for us to really better determine where dragons fit in the group of archosaurs, we're going to need a little bit more information here from not just the skull, but the rest of the skeleton. In this case, specifically the ankles, the ankles of 
the animal because archosaurs are split into two different groups based off of the kind of ankles that they have. The first group has more of a crocodilian-like ankle, what is called a cruro, cruro tarsal, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, a cruro tarsal ankle, commonly found in crocodiles and alligators, is a double jointed ankle, meaning that the bones can move not only in this direction, but also out, outward in this direction as well, allowing alligators to sprawl out um, and, and move in a kind of sprawled out gait, as well as to move up and kind of move um, in, an, in an upright gait as well. And so that cruel, the cruel tarsal ankle helps them to do that. The other side of the archosaurian group, where pterosaurs and dinosaurs are, has a different kind of ankle, called a mesotarsal ankle. Now this ankle only has one joint to it, where it, it moves in one direction. And that is going to be the deciding factor that helps us identify where dragons fit in. Now in order to determine where dragons fit in terms of those two ankle types, we're going to need another piece of information. And what I was able to dredge up was this modeling, this 3D model of Drogon's skeleton, Drogon the dragon from the show. This is the 3D skeleton that animators use when rendering and modeling the um, dragon when, when modeling it in 3D space. And what you'll notice is that they have gone so far as to provide details as to the ankle bone structure. If we look here, the ankles in this dinosaur seem to match up very closely to the mesotarsal ankle, meaning that this ankle isn't moving in two directions, it's just moving in one direction here. And that is going to help us further refine our pick our, our identification of dragons, where now we can tell that dragons are closer related to pterosaurs and dinosaurs than to crocodilians, which makes even more sense when you think about it. So I think we're getting even closer to the truth of where dinosaurs fit in the overall evolutionary tree of life. Now, before we can go further though, we're gonna need to understand what makes the difference between pterosaurs and dinosaurs. Because believe it or not, the flying reptiles known as pterosaurs, that includes pterodactyl, Quetzalcoatlus, and other flying reptiles of the Mesozoic era, are not dinosaurs. They're separate from the entire group of terrestrial animals known as dinosaurs. And the big factor that sets them apart is in the hips, the hip structure, because dinosaurs have a three-part hip comprised of the ischium, the ilium, and the pubis that helps them to walk upright on two legs. That is a major, major deciding factor that um, really sets them apart versus the pterosaurs, because pterosaurs do not have these traits. And that is where things get rather difficult, because looking at this 3D modeling, 3D rendering, the hip is, is rather simple. It is not um, what I would expect when trying to look at a very accurate um, skeletal model. Looking at pictures of Drogon in flight and other pictures of the hip bones there, it doesn't appear, to me at least, that um, Drogon or the other dragons in the series have a very well-defined three-part um, hip. A hip bone not, that contains the ischium, the ilium, and the pubis. So I would place dragons closer related to pterosaurs than to dinosaurs. And this makes a whole lot of sense because pterosaurs are the only other vertebrates other than birds that have evolved the ability of flight. And since we know that dragons don't have feathers, it's going to stand to reason that their ability to flight could be related to pterosaurs. Now, uh, we can go dig even deeper on this. So let's dig a little bit deeper with me here, rock stars, as we take a look at where exactly dragons fit in with their relationships with pterosaurs. Because pterosaurs evolved flight a little bit differently than dragons did, if you take a look. Both have a membrane that they use for flight, much like a bat. However, um, unlike bats, pterosaurs have one pinky that grew very long, and that's the attachment point for their sail, essentially, for their big flappy thing, let's call it. Whereas dragons in this series, in Game of Thrones, 
evolved elongated fingers like bats and contains multiple fingers in there. And so because dragons have multiple elongated fingers, that tells us that they are not within the same group as uh, pterosaurs. They likely represent a completely unique order of animals separate from pterosaurs. It can get a bit fishy at this point because um, w uh, we really need more information on the actual skeletal information of the dragons to really better nail down where they are. But, um, you know, for this discussion, for this video, I'm going to put them as being very closely related to pterosaurs, but a separate order. Perhaps they evolved first, dragons evolved separately from pterosaurs and kind of split off there and did their own thing. Um, which I, again, think really makes a lot of sense. It makes sense that dragons would fit into the Archosaurian lineage. It makes sense that they would be closer related to pterosaurs because of the way not only they have those flight capabilities, but because of the way their ankles look in this one picture here, and especially in terms of how their pelvis seems to be um, engineered in terms of the show. And so thank you so much, Rockstars, for joining me in this crazy wild exploration, this crazy rabbit hole that we've dug down in terms of um, taking a look at the potential evolutionary history of the dragons of Westeros. Let me know um, what you think. If you think I'm totally full of it and I missed some details there that um, you, you've you noticed, leave those in the comments below. I want to know your theories as well in terms of this evolution because, again, um, this is just a complete theory that I've come up with. It is in no way the absolute um, answer to, um, to, that, to that problem there. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. And as always, be sure to smash that subscribe button. We'll check you next time.